Friends, I had a subscriber ask the question if I could give an update uh, this about the kidney stones, about whether I've been having kidney stones lately. And that subscriber had read one of my videos, or maybe he wasn't a subscriber, I'm not sure, but had, had watched one of my videos um, about what foods were high oxalate and how to eat to prevent kidney stones. He wanted an update. It might have been a he or she, I'm not really sure. I think it was a he. Uh, an update as to whether that's been successful for me or not. So I'm not going to ramble. I'm going to say, yeah, it has. Uh, and what I'm doing, I'm doing a screen capture here because I'm going to show you kind of what I've done to avoid kidney stones. Back in November of 2017, I did a bunch of research, wrote a story that was in the local newspaper, uh, kind of uh, vetted by a really good uh, urologist that's here local in Valdez, North Carolina. His name is Michael Brian Bauer. Uh, Brian was a former Navy urologist a uh, really good doctor that really knows his stuff about kidney stones. And one of the things I really like about Brian is that he's had kidney stones himself, so he's not just treating something that he just theorizes about. He knows what you're going through when you have these things. So Brian and I, uh, I found this list that was confusing looking to me online. It was not laid out very well. I went and relayed it out, and I've posted that. And it's on the other video. I'll send a link to the other video on just how to eat to avoid kidney stones the number one thing you're looking at in most cases, now there are different kinds of kidney stones. The most common though are the um, calcium oxalate stones, which are made up of calcium and oxalate. Um, but mostly the culprit is, is oxalate, not so much calcium. If you eat calcium and oxalate together, it would seem like that would be the, the, the bad uh, combination. But the long story short, you can go back and watch those other videos, is if you eat something with calcium in it, like you drink a glass of milk with a high oxalate food, like spinach is the worst, uh, then the oxalate binds with the calcium in your belly and it, it, it is eradicated through your, I guess, poop or pee or whatever, right? Through, through, your, through your bodily uh, functions, <laughs> right? If you eat a lot of spinach, you don't eat something with calcium, then what it does is the spinach will go into your kidneys and your kidneys will pull oxalates out of other parts of your body, excuse me, not oxalates, but calcium, and it will fuse in your kidneys and cause stones to form. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons you get stones. It might be genetic, uh, hereditary. I mean, there's, there's, there's propensities toward it, but mostly it's about staying hydrated and it's about not eating over abundance of high oxalate foods with no calcium. So uh, again, without in, not in combination of calcium, you want to have the combination of calcium. So eat your spinach salad, drink a glass of milk. You should be okay. But so anyway, I've pulled the list back up. I've got this other, uh, this was a, a, an article I read by the University of Chicago, still holds true. Uh, I, 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 hopefully they've maybe updated even further, but they tell, of course, what the most high oxalate foods are. But I've made this spreadsheet looking thing here on my Google documents, which you can go to and access. And basically, I have tried to follow this. Uh, I'll tell you where I've failed and what I've done right and wrong. Uh, I have eaten a good bit of grapefruits uh, over, since, since November. I like them, but you look here, 12 milligrams. <coughs> it's calling it very high here. But when you, when you look at spinach under vegetables, let's go here and look. Like raw spinach, 656 milligrams, cooked 755. Nothing. Nothing compares to spinach when it comes to getting high oxalate. Nothing's even in the ballpark with it. So when you see something like high, high dosage and it's an avocado and you're eating 19 milligrams, don't worry so much about that. So what I've done, I have pretty much tried to stick with this. Grapefruits have been one of my, my only high oxalate maybe, or that's not even, it's just barely traces of oxalate really compared to spinach. My problem with spinach, man, I eat spinach salads. I could eat them seven days a week. I could eat, I could chop spinach up, fry it into other stuff. And I was thinking, man, I'm getting this like super high. It didn't make me feel good. Um, spinach does give you lots of vitamins and it's, it, it's a fantastic food, but not if you have a, like I say, a leaning toward kidney stones. Uh, I, I've eaten a lot of blueberries. You see, blueberries are very low. So blueberries and cherries now, pears, I love pears. I eat those. Apples all the time. Grapes, I'm a big grape eater. Uh, lemons. Uh, so I'm going to tell you, first of all, before I go any further with this, uh, let me tell you what has happened uh, 
So when I wrote the article and when I posted that video, I had a seven millimeter stone that was sitting in my left kidney. And it was kind of in a hunkered down in a little sort of a little pocket in my kidney. And uh, Brian Bauer, the urologist, told me at some point that thing will come down. That'd be pretty, that's pretty big. And, and I said, is there any, he tried to lithotripsy, it couldn't get in there. I'm, I'm just too thick a person for lithotripsy to work. And so he said, uh, he said, let's just see what happens. And, and he said, if I follow the, the, the uh, diet, avoid the oxalates, stay hydrated. And he said, drink a lot of lemon in your water. <clears throat> take lemons and squeeze them up. Even take real lemon if you have to. But he said, he, he even admitted, he said, he said it, it, it's, it's uh, dicey as to whether it 100% works or not, but a lot of people swear by it. I'll say this, I won't swear by it, but I have drunk a lot of lemon water uh, since I had the kidney stones. And so far, uh, have I had kidney stones? Yes, I have, but not a big one. Let me tell you what's happened. So not long after that video, I sort of went into a vegetarian phase and I ate the fruits and I ate the vegetables here that were not, uh, I mean, I did eat okra, which is showing fairly high. Uh, uh, I've eaten, you know, lots of carrots, asparagus, lots of asparagus, uh, lots of peppers, lots of soybeans. Uh, you know, these are, these are moderate, moderate, but most of what I mean, mustard greens, I have tried to start eating mustard greens, broccoli, lots of broccoli, cauliflower has become a kind of a staple, lots of mushrooms, peas, man, I eat tons of peas now. So I stayed with these lower oxalate vegetables, lower oxalate foods in every category, but I became about, I came, became a vegetarian for about four months straight, didn't eat any meat. Of course, most meat is not very uh, high in oxalate at all. So like very little bits of traces of it. So I'll show you here the meats. You see meats aren't really as much a problem, but I did go sort of vegetarian route, drank lots of lemon water. <clears throat> and what happened I started passing little flakes of, of kidney stones that didn't really hurt. Like I'd go pee sometime and they'd be just almost like little dust in there. And Brian had told me that it's possible that the lemon water and eating a, a very healthy diet can cause them to deteriorate in your kidney and you flush them out. So I think that's what was going on. Okay, I can't swear to it. I know this. I had the seven millimeter stone when I went back and had an x-ray for a follow-up. Uh, they measured the stone again, it was five millimeters. So what was what I was peeing out were flakes and flecks and little chunks off of that kidney stone that was in there in my kidney. I've not had any kidney stone attacks, no major ones. I tell you what, I did it one night. I, I started feeling like I was going to have one and, and I went ahead and took a medication so that uh, uh, you know, so I wouldn't have to go to the emergency room. Made it through the night. Uh, kind of let the, the painkiller wear off and see how I felt. I felt okay. Just drank, drank, drank lots of water. Within about three days, I did pee another chunk of it out. And I guess it's the same one. That said, I've not been back to get a, a second x-ray since, since the seven millimeter diagnosis. So, I, but I, I expect now that it may be totally gone out of that left kidney. I only have my problems with left kidney. And so... So far, so good. I've peed out pieces of, of, uh, of kidney stone. I may have peed it all out. Uh, I, I actually had to go pee outside one time in the dark and I could feel one come out when I was out peeing in the dark. I couldn't see it. I was outside with my dog. He had to pee. Suddenly I had to pee. Sorry about this talking about peeing. <laughs> but anyway, I know that I passed one out in the yard. It hasn't been maybe a couple months ago. So and the other thing that's happened or that, that happened with Dr. Uh, Bauer's treatment was he did stent my left ureter and basically what he did he stretched it out a little bit and he told me he said I think since we did, did this stenting treatment and I've done this that that you'll be able to pass the kidney stones easier so that's another thing I think that's happened is I probably have a larger ureter on the left side now because he did stent it uh, I, I don't know if eventually those things constrict again at some point but he talked like it would probably help me in the future. So far it has. So I've been two and a half years now, a little more than that, right? Something like two and a half. Yeah, about, about two years and eight months. No kidney stone attacks, but I have passed a few. I take pictures of them. Sometimes I share them on Facebook. They're so gnarly and ugly. So I'll show you some of them that I have passed and without basically without incident. So I do think eating the way I've been eating is helping. Uh, I do think drinking lots of the lemon water helps. Um, 
and I think probably the staining, the fact that I went through that staining has probably helped me. So not a whole lot of fancy graphics or anything with this video, just me explaining this is an update. Uh, has, has it worked? I would say it has. So at least in part, I think eating the low oxalate diet. The one thing where I've, the one failing I've had, I'm gonna go ahead and show you where, where I have really messed up almonds. Now, once again, almonds are showing up very high here. I have eaten a bunch of almonds lately because I, I found out that I was like borderline diabetic. And so I was trying to get away from greasy food. So when I want something with fat, nothing quite satisfies my craving for fat uh, better than almonds. And that's a good kind of fat to have. So I've eaten probably way too many almonds lately. I should go to sunflower seeds or pecans or something here that's less because 122 milligrams is, I could be building another kidney stone based on eating almonds. But still yet, man, it's, set, it's six or seven times more oxalate in spinach. I've basically dropped all spinach. The only time I eat spinach is like if it's in a, a creamy spinach dip where I know there's calcium in there too. And so I uh, hate that because man, I used to, I, I'm kind of famous on YouTube for growing spinach. You can look up Tony Lee Glenn and spinach. You'll see a lot of videos where I'm growing some awesome looking spinach. And that was the height of when I was just eating it. Scads of spinach, man. I was so happy to be getting it. I loved it. I always loved it. I was growing my own and it was it grows fantastically here on this mountain. So that's where I formed my kidney stones, I'm quite sure, is uh, not staying hydrated and eating tons of the worst food I could eat to get a kidney stone. That's my update, friends. Um, doing really well, thank the Lord. I've not had any more kidney stones. Uh, if, if you've had any success stories, you yourself, if you tried eating low oxalate and you've either had kidney stones go away or, or whatever, uh, there's somebody that spams me some kind of something called Waza, something like that. Uh, if those spammers come by, I'm just going to delete your, your comments. I don't think, I don't think you're real. So, but if anybody else has any other success, wants to share some stories about ways that they have avoided kidney stones, particularly with dieting or with uh, staying hydrated or if it's exercise. I have exercised a lot more. I've lost some weight since I had, was having the kidney stone attacks. So, uh, or if you've had some sort of medical procedure you think has really helped, I do think the staining helps. That's it, folks. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like and leave your comments if there's some cool things that you can share with us and uh, benefit all of us who are suffering from this horrible mess. Thanks.